Welcome to Ghoulfish on Games, where we're jumping into the 32-bit era, where everything was bigger, including today's light gun, the Sniper Scope. This is the Sniper Scope light rifle and shotgun, and made by, or at least released by, Titan Concepts in the UK. And this was the only way you could get real scope action. And if we flip the box over, we find a carry handle on the top, which is always appreciated. And then on the back, we get to see the various features of the gun, as well as some key points that's repeated all around the box. 100 MHz TV compatible, asterisk. Motion activated scope, pump action reload, and linear kickback. I do feel they might have been a bit worried about making such a realistic looking gun as the box has quite a few warnings on it about not pointing it at anyone, don't repaint it, and don't use it outside as it could be very dangerous. So let's open this up and check out what we have inside. And under the flap we have the light gun itself, which has more buttons than we've ever seen on a gun to date. We also have the titular scope which has lots of extra moulded plastic around it to make it look fancy. And if we remove this upper box we find underneath, like a box of chocolates, the stock with its rubberized back, as well as the barrel. Unfortunately there was no manual in this box when I bought it, but I'm sure we'll do fine without it, so let's check out its various configurations. And to start with we can use the gun just as it is, and this is known as its shotgun mode. Which is a little bit larger than most light guns, but it does have this sweet pump action reloader. It actually does feel quite nice to hold. Now to fit the scope, we need to open up this flap at the top, and then we can line up the notches, and it will just slide in. And while you can use it just like that, the scope isn't actually very good for detailed aiming. It really has another goal, which we'll see later on when we play some games. The next part we'll attach is the stock, which really does bulk the rifle out. And like the Menacer, it actually doesn't feel too bad to use. Finally, we get to the barrel, which is a completely pointless bit of plastic. It fits by just pushing it in and twisting, but you should try and make sure the screw holes at least end up pointing down so you don't see them. And with that attached, the rifle is complete, and is absolutely massive. The barrel doesn't actually provide any features whatsoever outside completing the look of the gun. And if you were wondering, the whole thing even dwarfs the size of the Nintendo Super Scope. As this is covered in buttons and pretty much replicates the entirety of an Xbox pad, let's take a quick tour around the gun. And so we start with the trigger, which is just the A button. And just behind that is this nub, which is actually a D-pad. Next along we get the start and back buttons, along with the white and the X button. And if we flip the gun over, we find the B, black and Y buttons. Next to that is a switch that gives us various auto fire modes. And we can't forget about the huge shotgun style pump action reload, which recreates the B button. There's also a few extra switches which are for features specific to the gun like the kickback switch on this side. We flip it back over to the other side, we find the scope motion switch as well as its sensitivity knob. We'll see this in action very soon, and it is used in conjunction with this bit here, which is a light sensor, but just underneath that is a memory card slot so you can use your regular Xbox memory cards. Which neatly leads us onto the games, and there were six titles spread across three releases. We get Silent Scope Complete, which has the three Silent Scope games. We get House of the Dead 3, which also included an unlockable House of the Dead 2. And we have Starsky and Hutch, which the box promises that it has light gun support. So let's start this off by checking out the game that this gun was designed for, Silent Scope Complete. Which opens up with a basic game select screen, which in theory you can operate using the light gun, though in practice it tends to be unresponsive, at least on the first boot, so you'll end up having to use the d-pad on the gun with its weird layout. 
The issue is the game expects you to be much closer to the TV than any other game I've played, and it also expects the TV to be the brightness of a small star. So you'll end up having to use the in-game calibration to set the brightness way, way up. Amazingly, this is with me using the service menu to set the TV brightness way higher than normal. But after a bit of tweaking with the distance and the brightness, you might end up with something that works and doesn't look totally horrid. But it's not off to a good start, that's for sure. And yes, the game does look this washed out in person. I will try to apply a touch of colour correction to the direct capture so it's not too bad. But the brightness is applied when the gun is active, and they remove it for cutscenes, so it is a little annoying to deal with. If you're not aware, the goal of Silent Scope is to use your sniper rifle to shoot baddies. You can move around quite quickly to get a rough aim, and then use the scope to zoom in on the action. In the arcades, this was done by having a screen inside the sniper scope itself, but at home, it's not quite the same. So instead, they put a zoomed circle on the screen, and if you get everything just right, when you look down that plastic scope, all you can see is that circle. Because having the scope on the screen rather than just the gun, the input method is a little different. Moving around unscope is like any other normal light gun game. But as soon as you zoom in, the controls change to be more like something with a joystick, with you pushing the scope around by aiming around the circle. It's a little fiddly and much slower than the arcade, but it sort of works. And on other light guns, you would bring up the scope using the B button. But this is where the first party piece of the sniper scope comes into play. As if you have the scope trigger enabled, you can then bring up the in-game scope when you bring your eye up to the real scope. And this is done via that light sensor that detects when it gets dark. You can dial in the sensitivity via the knob on the side. Hurry up. And when you get it all working, it almost replicates the arcade. It's Hurry actually up. quite nice, though it isn't perfect, as the scope trigger is the B button. So if you leave it enabled, you can expect some oddities Hurry in the main up. menu, with it randomly leaving menus or wanting to quit, because the light levels are changing all around you. The games themselves haven't received any graphical upgrades as far as I can tell, and all look products of their time. But there is lots of content for you to get through, as there has been a number of additions to the various games. Silent Scope 1 seems to have the least amount of extras, as it has the training mode on the main menu, then the shooting range and time attacks on the game select screen. Silent Scope 2 has the arcade game, as well as an original mode with new missions, bosses and a few other extras. Thankfully, the game remembers the calibration settings between each game, so you can just jump right in. But that's more or less the only real consistency between the games, as the button used to skip the cutscenes will differ from game to game. Sometimes it's the black button, other times it's start, and then, who knows, it may be the gun trigger. But thankfully, 2 is still full of fun moments, such it's as... Showtime. Now, let's play Metal Gear for real. Getting extra lives by looking at ladies. Bonus life. And telling us the weak point of a human is the head. I'll warm you up, handsome. Now jumping between scope and unscoped is the key to all these games, so getting that sensitivity just right or using the B button is critical. Though to be honest, the scope doesn't always zoom in quite where I expect it to, but you will get lots of time to master the controls, as you'll get multiple routes and branching paths in these games. And there's some nice shake-ups to the gameplay, with dark levels where you need to use the IR scope, or having to shoot while on a moving vehicle. And finally, we have Silent Scope 3, which has both Silent Scope 3 and Silent Scope EX, where as far as I can tell, EX was the arcade game and 3 was a home game. 
Both are interesting in their own rights and make for a complete package. And I think it's easy to tell that 3 wasn't born on the arcade, as it doesn't have the same brutal time limits or limited number of credits that we got in the first two games. It's a shame that this package has some real problems, as those issues with the light gun are unique to it. None of the other games that we will play will have those issues. Though I will say the gun itself isn't perfect, as after a bit of playing I found it easier to He's remove the stock hostages. and the barrel, Bring him down with one as it shot. made it lighter as well as much nicer to hold and use. This is definitely not the most comfortable light gun we've reviewed so far. Now, shoot. You're the greatest. According to information obtained by this station, the terrorists were seized today. Next up we have the other game that this gun was directly designed for. The House of the Dead 3. Which in the arcade featured a shotgun, so we can definitely use it without all that extra plastic tat. And we can also move further back from the TV as this game has none of the aiming issues that we had in the previous title. Even the cursor moves much smoother and nicer without any of that artificial brightening. And the game itself is just as fun in the home as it was in the arcade. And that pump action reload is a lovely touch. All the monsters and zombies go down nicely and it's hard to say anything bad about this game at all. It's an arcade classic for a reason. It's just dumb zombie shooting, campy story and badly delivered lines of fun. This just might be the right game to point out one of the other features of this gun, the linear kickback. If you enable it with this switch, then every time you shoot the gun, it will move a weight around to simulate it shooting. Now it literally sounds stronger than it feels, and it is completely independent of the game, so you don't even need to be playing for it to be active. And to be honest, it's one of those nice in theories, not quite in practice. If it was driven by the game like Rumble, or if it was a little bit stronger, it could be better, but you'll quickly turn it off as it's far too noisy to be left on. And all that action, as well as the extra modes, isn't the end of this release, as when you complete the main game, you get to unlock Another game that I played massively in the arcades, and the shotgun design makes a little less sense here, but it still plays perfectly. And I'm sure we'll be seeing this game again in some of the other light gun reviews. And we come to the final game. Starsky and Hutch, and I will say this right off the bat, this is not a good light gun game. Or at least, this light gun makes the game terrible to play, as you're not only having to shoot with the light gun, but you're also having to drive the car with the D-pad. But it doesn't really like picking up two directions like forward and left and right at the same time. So you end up having to try to accelerate, and then try and steer, and then you try to accelerate, and then you try and steer all the while trying to aim with everything moving including the gun and your targets. As a game you'll really wrestle with the controls. And it's not as if you need to take just a few shots at the baddie, you'll have to triple that enemy's car in weight from all the bullets to finally finish the mission. It's a real slog. Now it might work better in two player mode, where one person does the driving and then the other person does the shooting. But in single player, this is easily the most frustrating light gun game I have ever played. Now amazingly, I think there was more models of light guns than there was light gun games for the Xbox. And maybe in the future, we'll check them all out. But until then, I was the Goldfish, that was a ridiculous light gun, and this was Goldfish on Games. Thank you for watching my video, I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider liking, subscribing or sharing, or you can look down your scope and check out the two other videos that you can see on the screen right now. 